Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to day three and the final day of the online presentation of the cohort two of Tito Parindi Fellowship, where our fellows will be sharing their reflections, insights, and learnings from their fellowship journey in their areas of explorations. Hi, uh, my name is Ashik Krishnan, and I'm a Travelers University. At Travelers University, we design and facilitate various travel-based learning programs, ranging from week-long learning journeys to six months long, long-term fellowship programs. And these programs are in the intersecting themes of education, ecology, economics, and social justice. And the three aspects that we focus on in all of our journeys are connection with one's own self, connection with the community around, and connection with the rest of nature. The 52 Parinde Fellowship Program is for youth who are in the pursuit of livelihoods, livelihoods oriented towards social, ecological, and personal well being. Through the fellowship, the fellows meet with different livelihood practitioners in their chosen areas of interests, people who are already working in these areas. The fellows engage with them involved in their work and thus get to have a direct learning experience for themselves. The journey of the current cohort started on August 1st, 2022 at Sitalingi Valley in Tamil Nadu, where we had our two weeks orientation at a space co-hosted by Sitalingi Organic Farmers Association and Tribal Health Initiative. After which our fellows set off on their individual journeys for about four to four and a half months. And post which we have been having our reflection workshop at Proto Village in Andhra Pradesh. Once again, welcoming you to the final set of presentations of our fellows, where our fellows will be sharing their learnings and insights from their journey. So the first fellow who will be presenting today is Kavya. Kavya is from Hyderabad, Telangana. And Kavya's journey began with an intent to understand rural spaces, to explore the self-reliant aspects of diverse geographies to enable her to work at the grassroots. Her query arose from connecting various connotations of progress, how the idea in itself has played a role in alienating certain sections of the society from nurturing themselves, leading to indignifications and exploitation in many ways. Her interest in the sector comes from her peripheral rural upbringing and from identifying social disparities through academic exposure. This has led her back to her roots towards reimagining the limitations of a community. Through the 52 Parinde Fellowship, she has traveled to various tribal and peripheral rural spaces to discover initiatives within the existing social systems that respond to the layered sociocultural issues. The experience within each of the spaces she visited brought out new dimensions and enriched her perspective to envision social transformation. What you see on the map now is a, is a journey that Kavya undertook during her fellowship journey. Welcoming Kavya for her presentation. <clears throat> Hello everybody, good morning. Thank you for the introduction, Ashik. I'm Kavya, I would like to reintroduce myself. I'm from Hyderabad. For the last five months, I've been traveling to different places to explore initiatives within the existing social systems that respond to the social issues uh, through various contexts, alternatives, if I may say. In the past few months, I have probably given this introduction hundreds of times. And every time I said this thing that I am from Hyderabad, there was one response that commonly came to me that uh, if I may use Hindi for this one line, so, and I was there walking unknown paths, being hosted and fed for nothing, trying to build a conscious approach 
understanding the reality of the situation and probably building a little more hope on humanity not all of it of course but some parts of it the alternate ecosystem and the acquired hope the parindes i lived with have given me can we go to the next slide yes so my domain is related to community intervention and the ideologies within the socio cultural context these are some of the lens through which i try to understand this domain uh try to understand people working through these ideas through various lens having a holistic approach in their own way with their own understanding and within the limitation of their own knowledge next we live in a world where humans are attached to a monetary tag even before being born <clears throat> thanks to the efficient healthcare business and then pushed into education where we are valued like commodities based on our qualifications to provide or serve profit for a higher class a higher class thrives on exploitation creating infrastructure by extracting resources to keep the circular economy running and calling it progress a system that has convinced us to have poison in our food without question to keep that engagement with the healthcare facility intact and it is called development if one denies development how can one even access healthcare education and fertilizer so all there is is money so as to be secure in the loop uh, my exploration had these themes in my mind to understand the aspects of exploitation and extraction on a general level being from an academic background i have various opinions that have developed over time on these ideas and concepts various perspectives i have got to hear and all of this but how it would be to experience them traveling tra traveling through different parts of the country mostly on the eastern belt as you might have seen on my map navigating from the jungles of satisgarh to uh, to the hills of northeast interestingly all these uh, all these uh, pathways i crossed through were filled with the tribal population had their own definite culture diverse culture and there were practices of self reliance so i wanted to understand initiatives working within these aspects on how their idea has played a role in creating or envisioning social transformation next slide please so the first organization i visited was sati samaj sevi sanstha uh, it is a gandhian organization uh, the reason why i resonated with the idea of this organization was 40 years ago the founders of this organization embarked on a similar journey the one we were pursuing uh, within the cohort to during our 52 parinde fellowship so uh, there were gandhians like uh, n subarao uh, the mentors of my parindes who have trained them with skill side on this area would they go and work in so my parindes have landed after where the naxalbari movement was at its peak and the uh, and the beginning of the whole industrial movement was happening so their idea was to envision local self reliance and gandhian principles of rural development through their actions here so it was interesting to know the initial time when they went to bastar most of them belonged to an outside region none of them were from satisgarh so they were uh, white khadi kurtas like ganians were and <clears throat> the people were very skeptical why are these people coming and like smiling at me smiling at us for no reason and we don't even know them the first few questions they encountered was uh did they do some crime outside in a city or something and come back here to hide in the jungle and 
stating things like progressiveness development and all of that for a reason so that is how their journey began it took a while for them to gain that trust ability they had no money in their pocket they had they went house to house build relationships had food with them and after a while after i think 6 months into the uh, phase once they got accommodated well uh, the organization that have that has trained them in their skills has sent a huge lorry matlab it was said before that a huge lorry with equipment tools technology would come for providing some uh, insights into the art sector of the vasta region so uh, listening to that the people were very excited they didn't know what was happening but they knew that something was going to come so some of them went to getting bar uh, hay grass and uh, immediately built a whole setup where uh, where these people could showcase whatever they wanted to say so and the initial time what their idea was was uh, these skills like the means uh, they started in a village called kondagao because they were good with terracotta and ceramics and kondagao is a village full of potters uh they have traditionally for generations practiced pottery so they thought that would be the first place to start but the problem was with the technicality they had uh because the potters were very skilled in the form they knew but uh, there was no definite uh, heating system basically the pots after they were made on the wheel there was no centering on the wheel because it was a handmade wheel and once they were made on the wheel they <clears throat> just laid it on the ground put lots of hay grass and burnt it because of which a lot of pots broke and because of the rampant industrial movements that were going on uh people were now dependent on the material raw material needed to make the uh, art form also on the market so for this they uh, and and they wanted to kind of protect the bastar identity because they have a unique style to portray for themselves that is how the initiative began from terracotta they expanded to dokra art uh that's the other side so dokra art uh, again this will this uh, dokra is the first thing again the dokra art brought me back to uh, the beginning because this is the lost wax technique most of us know about the mohenjodaro dancing girl so the technique behind that sculpture was dokra and it was built on many layers uh, soil from the field from the river bed and then there is the bee wax that put in between and it's cast with iron and when the bee wax melts the whole structure is formed so basically to make a single piece it almost takes 20 to 30 days because after every step there is a drying process that was essential so that made the process even slower and and the whole economy of it was another aspect and how cultural economy both can go together and respect of the individuals and their identity can be protected was one of the ideas on which sati worked after a few days of working here they have realized uh, there were many other socio economic problems that were associated and livelihood was not the only context through which they could work on so uh, they started a round table school sati round table gurukul which was built on adapt adopt and improve uh, sort of values and and there is a child helpline that has come up in the last 10 15 years because of excessive human trafficking that was going on in the region so my initial intention was to just look at the aspect because Individual was interested in that aspect, but when I got to know all of this happening and the history Bastar had as a region with the whole social movement that was in the Naxal Bari in place and the ideological conflict and violence, all of these uh, infiltrated my mind during. And first, my aspect was to understand human trafficking. How, why was it happening? Where are people taken? Some some forms to have contract workers, and interestingly, in tribal, yes, the Halbi-speaking community that practice 
had more than 15 children in a lifetime and while it was not possible for to take care of all of them so what used to happen was when they were trapped and taken off to hyderabad or bangalore or other metropolitan cities to work <coughs> uh they forgot what they and that is why the whole in took off and trafficking was easier to do in the region and the helpline had many volunteers community only because they were the only people who can who could identify who was being trafficked and who was not people stand in a bus stand and see like the trafficking was there or not so that is how this in and interested me in the sort of healthcare education because when i was there uh, there were things were happening for the teachers teacher training sessions i was capacitating programs happening from the government ngos and other private individuals part and capacity building was always a conflicting why why enablement or for what reason and if it is uh diverging the pathways to uh need for it part of a thing so that is when i uh, got in contact with one person who was working in the sukma region where there was extreme movement and uh, usually the government policies cannot work there because uh, fear of conflict because both sides do not want to enter each other's territory and that would is in violence so and the access to a lot of produce traditionally people were sustainable in the aspects of health and but again with the whole modernization as was not possible and malnutrition was one of the biggest concern that was seen for children under 5 years so the person i met was within the region uh through some influential contacts he had sort of a thing and i he was standing building them at the equipment like the basic equipment and the nutritional values each food produce had <clears throat> then uh that led devada because dantewada has been the hub of the political movement and one thing that came into my mind after was the resource curse competition over natural resources such as coal and metals can lead to intensify or sustain this was the classic case in dantewada where uh, it is the three kind of facts one comes from the bone tribe yes and this they had a whole self life of living their this a liberating thing that was one aspect of it and the other aspect of it was the vulgarity of the extraction of resources resources there was the sandwich between the power dynamic between the nuxels and the and how the whole idea of development also such as like this, can uh, meet the peace building roads for not for the benefit of the people but uh, to transfer from one place to another and in between many concentration camps played because as long as the conflict and the resource extraction also thrive so no mean towards peace in any sense but i wanted to understand what other alternatives could be possible and how do you work in such an environment what uh, with what ideology and what intention that would happen two main questions i had was and uh, the can natural resource conflicts influence sustainable livelihood uh and the other question was uh, if there are possibilities to create natural resource management opportunities broader na- natural resource management opportunities but through different lens i wanted to see uh so 
so uh, first stop was for me Pranit because he was a contact for through uh, earlier fellow Sapno Kishala is a very fascinating idea. It was an education system based on the values of freedom, equality, societal awareness, and a lot of other things. Uh, if I would go back to childhood, I would want an education like that where uh, they had a parliament every Saturday to hold any complaints or everything. And the, the daily schedule of the children was also, they choose to, uh, they, choose, they have a choice to learn what they want to and from whom they want to and how they want to. So that was another interesting aspect. And in between that, if there is a problem, they can hold on to their complaints and discuss it in the parliament, which happens on every Saturday with all the team members. So that, uh, that vision of looking at things that way helped me question my own understanding and layers of freedom on how free we think things are and how not free they are. And the context is very important in this uh, specific place, according to me, because uh, the tribal population is not very aware of the outside power dynamics that were happening and they fall prey towards something that exists beyond them. So this was one approach to build themselves and creating opportunities for them at different, in different ways and different aspects of life rather than the traditional education system. And most of the schools in Dantewada and Sukma region around I think 96 I was in schools all over Jharkhand, all the Naxal affected areas, have only a single teacher for all the grades. In between that, looking at an initiative like this created a lot of hope for me. And the other associated factors, Dantiwada was declared an organic farming uh, district and fertilizers are not allowed to come inside. And it was a, a role played by an IS officer and a farmer's collective and a person uh, called uh, Akash Padre, who started an initiative called Boom Gadi. So, uh, this was one aspect of it, and uh, the non violent honey is another thing that came out of a moment that started uh, 30 years ago, where the person who came up with this project has, uh, has been a child who grew up with that initiative, basically. Uh, so, how that Influence like how the whole advertisement of it is also very context oriented, non violent honey sort of thing. And another interesting thing uh, that happened while I was in Dantewada was the UR Sangatan. Uh, this, this particular image shows the dialogue where people were asked if they preferred the urban life or the rural life and what were the reasons, and uh, they debated on that. And even before the Sangatan happened, for it to happen, uh, somebody needs funding and if we are uh, accessing for a mass people's movement funding from another ex external source what is the point of that movement altogether right so before it started uh, all the food that was necessary for the people to stay two to three days in this particular place came from uh, Asking people to donate, some somebody can donate rice because that was the harvest season also and people had excess rice to donate and vegetables and beans and all that is needed to cook food for around 300 people for two days. That, that was how the Sangatan was arranged. That was another interesting connotation to me to look at movements that are oriented towards socio-political understanding. The next place I went after Dantewada, from here my journey was like uh, serendipity. I was landing at different places by chance. I had no plan whatsoever what I was going to do next. But I wanted to visit uh, Shantini Ketan for the ideals it, it held because there was one skeptical question inside me. If, if we do think of a sustainable movement that can go on for a long time against some forces that were <clears throat> very powerful, which were again resource rich and uh, dominant in many ways, and which can influence the cultural value systems of many people in our country today. Then, how did uh, Tagore imagine his idea of 
Shanti Niketan, which was a open learning space, and Sri Niketan, which was rural development and traditional craft. How an economy can build on these aspects of life. So there was a poem that inspired me to go there, <clears throat> which is on the screen. So all of you can read. <laughs> so what what was left out of that place was what I wanted to understand, and as I could have imagined, uh, Shanti Niketan. Still, right through intellectual value systems, probably, but uh, uh, but the overall vision that Tagore had definitely disappeared. So, uh, next. So the person who hosted me there was Rajivan Ramasundra. He was an artist. Uh, he worked with the medium of concrete, and how uh, the aesthetic value of concrete also resonated. Uh, on the outside world and how we define them, the, the different lens to look at concrete and how art, contemporary art has become a, a medium through which uh, uh, material can be portrayed more than the art itself. So uh, it was he who took me to some places which were again interesting. Uh, the Museum of Santal, uh, Santal Culture was one of a kind that I have experienced so far, where, <clears throat> where a village took an initiative to establish a museum so that the younger generations can understand the tribal uh, values or the wisdom they hold to pass on to them. So it's an open space for the younger generation to come and interact and have a dialogue rather than a space for the outsiders to come and visit. So that the techniques of uh, building and all of that remain. And another uh, disturbing or an, or a default feature that was that came up was the corrugated iron roof. Uh, how hay, uh, because of the material dependence again, how hay grass needed maintenance every year and the restrictions on the access to forest produce how that has affected the building style and how corrugated roofs began to gain <clears throat> uh, relevance in that particular section techniques and all of that. So that was the perspective I was looking at and understanding how central culture is dealing with the postmodern development uh, reflections. <coughs> From here, my uh, uh, my exploration went towards farming and food systems because if I can imagine a sustain, uh, sustainable, self-sufficient life, food becomes an important aspect. And Spread Northeast was an organization by Samir Bozolai. And one thing he said to me that stood out was farming for our own food itself is a selfish exploitative human act. Because we uh, take out for, for the la large land to be cultivated, large forest lands have to be demolished, and then the food grown is only serving the human need. Whereas uh, food can also be available in a coexistent form of living. And his uh, food forest in Sonapur was a life model of compassionate natural farming, uh, where I got to live for around 10 to 15 days, and our days look like uh, foraging food in the morning and uh, coming back. So yams are like one uh, plants that uh, wild boars like to eat. And whenever the wild boars uprooted the yams, the st uh, stem of it was used for us in our day meal. So that was the kind of coexistence we were thinking of. And elephants usually pull down the bamboo uh, trees and the end parts like the uh, fine uh, fresh leaf was something that was very good for, for bamboo tea again. So that was the kind of coexistent uh, compassionate form of farming he was talking about. And and this organization and this person introduced me that a community lifestyle can be an open space and also extend to large parts uh, region, at least the bio region. He was working all over the Northeast. And uh, these two people were the farmers there, Duyada and Dasta, <laughs> with, who, with, who, with whom I spent most of my time <laughs> and taught many techniques to me. So they were imagining food for homestead food forest uh, at every tribal village because of the conflict between the tribal and non-tribal lands. Uh, so since the 
uh, vulnerable tribes were identified only a certain uh, kind of tribes were given access to the forest produces and others were not considered as tribes they were determined to be non tribes so the entire pattern of living lifestyle has changed a lot because of that and for and and the whole regeneration aspect that came out from outside organizations government policies ngos again all of these have given a lot of importance to cash crops that again became a monocropping in forest so uh, his idea was to have a layered structure yes can we go to the next slide from here i went to uh, mahan chandra bora because all all of the region was not exactly tribal and i wanted to understand what the rural farmers thought about this whole movement so mahan da again he is a farmer himself for generations his family has been farmers and for the last 20 years he have he has traveled all across northeast and collected more than 400 plus varieties of rice seed and established a seed library so this seed library acts as an exchange system a barter system for the farmers every farmer comes and uh, provides some of his harvest to be stocked in the seed library so that that can be reused by somebody else in the next uh, next season and with every season the any particular variety of rice uh, begins to gain more nutritional value so that was one section he started working in and the whole conflict between organic and inorganic producers and how the debt trap and uh, the over use of fertilizers and the trust uh, for fertilizers have improved more than the organic inputs all of these aspects he was working on and he was mostly working with the mishmi tribe and the flood affected area and how restoration was again monocropping and how his expertise and his engagement with different sections of the society can uh, come to a com common consensus on on identifying what is native and what is not native also because there is a diverse native form of production that is just going off and it was important to re realize all of that and include them uh, within the restoration uh, projects to take precaution against floods also because uh, it it was one of the reason for the heavy floods that was happening in the last 10 years in the region next slide this uh, this is his home and it almost felt like i was with my family they were very much ready to adopt me and they called me a non assami speaking sister <laughs> and took me to all wherever they had to go and had dressed me up and all of that i wouldn't do that by myself <laughs> next ha the next community i visited uh, was again on the assam meghalaya border and my host here was kandarpo he was an artist he was a sculptor and he has begun potato farming for some reason he loves potatoes and he has a social relations wala thing this com this was one community where except for my host except for this person nobody else spoke in hindi or english so for the one week uh, one week or so i stayed there i did not understand anything they said so in between i was like doing uh, some art or some making and they left me in the potato farm for a while because they thought i'm alienating myself sort of a thing and i ended up making this <laughs> but there were so many issues again uh, because of again the whole tribal non tribal forest laws uh, in place and so the youth had a huge denial towards the modern systems but they still needed uh, certain things like mobile phones these were the necessities there was no luxury that uh, people's aspiration had but yes there were uh, some necessities for which uh, so the village is across a big river it was one of the tributary of brahmaputra uh, and the sand beside that is used it's very soft and finite so most of that sand used to be smuggled and because the access to the forest was denied uh whatever the island area was uh from there people usually collect all the bamboos and take them on a river like in different directions and illegally steal it and navigating that river was a very hard task because uh they had to go on the opposite current and these were some of the things that were happening there uh 
again like my only contact was kandarpo and his perspective and his take on the issue and how he was working towards it next <laughs> after this uh, my interest again developed towards understanding how urban spaces would react to the issues of ecology social aspects and the political aspects and then i went to ra because it was a long standing movement and an initiative called seeds of the banyan it is under a banyan tree they try to make a community space it is a collaboration of artists uh, these people were from the tamil basti <clears throat> they have migrated to ra themselves when um, when the ra milk colony happened in the 1950s and since then they have been living there settled there and uh, when the metro car parking project was proposed uh, the ra movement uh, became pretty strong and the whole they'll whole collect connect with the nature and the warli tribe that lives in the region was very evident so they came together as a group and used music uh, to uh, create mobilization and other aspects uh, uh, but i always had this question ki uh, are political movements uh, creating an end towards something because when the movement ends even if it lasts for 5 to 6 years the government policy always gains uh, dominance and they succeed in doing what they do even after a delayed process so what do you can these political movements be beyond that perspective was something i wanted to see and during the movement also uh, this seeds of the banyan acted as the seed exchange uh, reserve sort of a thing where people exchange seeds and they only play traditional instruments when they are around nature and it was the first time i think in mumbai i uh, went to a lake in between this chaotic city mumbai we all know uh where uh, they were playing their music and i saw thousands of birds for the first time responding to these sounds so that was something that like created a whole new perspective for me and i did not believe that i lived in that world also and the influence music can have in diverse ways uh, and and through this movement again uh, they have uh, begun with this idea of creating uh, an open artist space in a uh, in a tribal uh, village near kolar in maharashtra where people who are interested in any aspect of alternative movements can come contribute live experiment and do all sorts of things so in a way this uh, this was one of the aspects like the movement itself has led to something bigger a vision bigger than what is possible and what is not possible and in all of these uh, uh, initiatives i visited one thing that i had always had in my mind and was conscious of is where the funding is coming from because funding plays a very central role in the kind of work we do and how uh, it it resonates with the theme and the vision that we go forward with and so that was an important aspect for me if if there is a csr corporate wala funding sort of a thing and one instance i would give for this is like if uh, an organization wants to come and uh, teach in a tribal area and people like adani has occupied their own resources and left them out of the picture and if their children were again asked to get educated by the csr fund provided by adani it in turn probably explains the situation that the resource uh, like the whole conflict between the idea i think so finding for me was very important uh, while looking at this initiative next so what did uh, a livelihood mean to me there are two ways in which we use this word a live livelihood and alternate livelihood alive because people in pursuit of this livelihood do not value or quantify themselves or the people around economically like a commodity measure progress by the purchasing power of individuals in a country rather believe in values that nurture growth in a regenerative manner alternate because the approach is not towards creating labor capital it is to detest the dominant exploitative and extractive system but 
is this really the solution there is no answer even as we climb the mountain of knowledge the question gets left unanswered buddha and sankara too searched the answer for the same question they too didn't find it is the duty of every human to try to try and find the answer for the same next way forward so my way forward after this fellowship is again to take action towards the self reliant community reliant lifestyle to contribute less towards the growth of dominant mainstream models as much as possible work with the issues of alcoholism and women abuse <coughs> engage co create and collaborate with the alternative ecosystem this is how i see my life forward for now and that is my way forward Thank you. Yes, that that was a highly insightful sharing, Kavya, of your extensive journey in the past four four and a half months. Um, yes, we are open for Q and A now. We have about fifteen minutes. Uh, so, if anyone in the audience would like to. share something or ask something to kavya that is the time for that you can unmute yourselves and uh speak i think it is vijay whose the name of rahul <laughs> uh who's put in the comments how to raise hands uh, vijay you can unmute yourself and speak directly or you can also put your question in the comments hello yes um i am not able to change uh, raise my hand so i just uh, interrupted i'm sorry i wanted to ask a question yeah. to can Kavya. you say can you mention who you are and because your name looks something else <laughs> i am uh, ridhima oh okay hi 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 ridhima oh it's you okay <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> i can't figure out how to raise hands okay <laughs> no worries uh, yeah hi yes ridhima yeah. yeah can i ask yes yes please yes please okay. yeah okay <laughs> uh, thank you so much kavya uh, it was very uh, enriching to listen to you talk uh, and all of these organizations you know because i have also gone through and the power you know in the last you were asking like what effect these political movements have and the question goes beyond it i feel you know it's not about what happens after 5 years or 6 years it's about that feeling you feel in the moment when you come in interaction with these um these uh, these values and this energy uh so my question to you is um in the end you said that you want to work on women uh, abuse and alcoholism so uh, uh where does that come from and what work on that and what is your um, what is your thing on that like why do you want to work on alcoholism uh, after coming in exposure with craft and farming and things like that so do you relate this to those topics or what is it so i, I was curious about that and i wanted to know for starting the fellowship uh, the whole idea i had in my head was uh within my village so i wanted to work in my village only and uh, there was a stuckness i had with uh, with the idea and an insecurity if i would be able to uh, there to 
those values and systems and maybe work properly or not for the last one and a half year uh, so i was trying to farm and uh, understand these issues because it was a persistent thing that has uh, led me to or like made me stay back in the rural space and this whole journey was also an exploration to enable myself to go back and work in the similar space so that is why i mentioned alcoholism and women abuse okay audible okay thank you i'd love to talk to you more about that later but thank you so much for your answer may i ask a question yes yes gurveen yeah yeah uh, i wanted to ask that when you started you had certain ideas in mind how has this whole journey kind of changed you uh, personally and at the level of ideas okay so while i started though i had so many ideas in my head most of it came from the academic exp- uh, exposure and a few mo- political movements i was part of uh, because i was in and around delhi uh, before uh, any of this Uh, approach towards rural development happened, and uh, this journey has helped me uh, deepen my understanding, experience initiatives, show show me a direction to take. Uh, in many ways, that was how it enriched me to have that first hand experience to see how people were working, living with them, learning with them, understanding the various connotations of progress, development, initiatives. layers of public policy how different uh, organizations and uh, private parties and the inner power structures and the outer power structures played a role in shaping many initiatives and the role they could play and the limitations they could have so all of these aspects i think i have learned through this journey by observing living and engaging with different kind of people Thank you. And the most enriching part, I would also say, would be my train journeys because all through the East Coast, after a point of time, I was only able to get a general train, and that is when I could internalize the aspect of migration also because most of the time I had to sleep on the floor only, and it was not even possible to lay down on the floor. It was jam packed, and there were one or two trains, and almost every train has has had a delay because. uh the good train had to have a priority so three four good train passed and stacks of people then had to move after that so that was the movement that internalized the whole experience for me right yeah would you recommend this uh, journey to others yes definitely okay thank you <laughs> thank you thank you good week people can also put the questions in the comments or unmute yourself and ask or speak and it necessarily needn't be just questions it can also be your reflections from you no know, hearing kavya the thoughts and reflections here that you are carrying after hearing kavya Uh, hi hi kavya thank you for your presentation and taking us through your journey uh, i was just wondering uh, did you come across any common challenges that were facing these movements or uh, the individuals that you met like a set of challenges would ha- that uh, might have been common uh, throughout um, the places you visited uh i would say many challenges were common because the whole idea of development itself is very and the patience of development also per single direction sort of a thing because uh, in certain spaces i would see people wanting to migrate to different uh, because that uh, 
that that gave them an idea that they would have a better life sort of leaving all that they identified with behind uh most of the aspects i could see were like that um uh, and the issues with uh, women i would say and the hierarchies in caste class uh, and uh, the different um, context i personally felt was uh, in the alternate ecosystem i was flattered but when when the mainstream uh, conversations came or if i had to be hosted somewhere else it's like okay especially if you want to do some service to the people sort of a thing and like that was a narrative that was happening even many people were skeptic if you wanted to come and observe and make a thing so sort of a thing these these things were there uh, that does not mean that a judgment was made, but i felt like there was an alienation towards the understanding of how society functions uh, i missed the last part your voice was breaking understand understanding towards and the society is in how different sections of the people had an isolated process that was going on all right okay thank you so layer of development and also social structures of like patriarchy and uh yeah thank you thank you dithika there's a comment i mean there's a question in the comments uh, on what basis do they decide the tribal and non tribal communities Yes. So oh, the government decides CVTGs, particularly vulnerable tribal groups, uh, which have uh, holistic rights to access. Not even holistic rights, but they can access minor issues, and that is decided on the interiority as of my understanding, because there were no specific guidelines on which the government has said it has decided because. in many regions some some sections of the tribal not is some tribes were not registered and some on the uh, boundary like some living near guwahati their land uh, their tribal land or the for develop the city and they were termed to be non tribals because they were near so that kind of a conflict was happening in different regions and uh, i think the interiority the region also played a role in determining and uh, the uh, interaction with the outside community the cultural values they or if there is an uh, identified feature that the government wants to categorize tribal communities in this is my understanding to the limit of my knowledge mm. this one more question by gurvi um is the definition or understanding of a better life the same across communities <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a very philosophical question <laughs> uh, communities have different uh, uh, understandings of what a better life would be for me uh, the communities i have enjoyed a lot spending time with them only tribes had their own like cultural they were a part of very limited to a few words and uh, within that only they convey articulating things did not make sense to them and life and death were almost similar if somebody dies also uh, it's not big. they can share one friend uh, uh, that have there's a woman who went to shop in uh yeah and uh, by mistake her axe on a baby she was holding in a cradle sort of so she just buried uh, her over this only and came back uh, kavya like, your voice is breaking uh, can we try the change like can we change the microphone and see uh, use the system microphone instead of the bluetooth one
Kavya, this is an aside. I'm Guruin speaking. I'm in Hyderabad. So when you come back, let's connect. Lot more questions. <laughs> Yes, yes, we'll we'll definitely connect the both of you, Gurbain and Kavya. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, am I audible now? Yes, yes, Kavya. Yeah. Okay, I was uh, just sharing an incident of a tribal woman who went to a forest with her uh, uh, less than one year old baby. She was carrying on her shoulder to chop firewood for the day, sort of a thing, and an axe fell on on the baby and the baby died there and she just worried uh, them over there like she came back and she was like something like this happened in a very normal sort of a tone so i don't know incidents like these stories like this always made me wonder what do i understand of life or what do i understand of death should there be something uh, very uh, diverse or important or special or a meaning that we will have to associate to create meaning to the aspect of life or not. So I have a very diverse opinion and it will take a long discussion for us, for me at least to answer this question. Yes, yes. <laughs> that incident is quite a powerful thing to swallow. Mm. I'm still trying to come to terms with it. Wow. Mm. Yes. We can maybe take one or two more questions before we move to the next uh, and the final presentation. Hi, may I ask a couple of questions? Yes, please, Usma. Uh, hi, Kavya. Uh, thank you so much for taking uh, us through your journey. Uh, I, although I had missed uh, the first half of your uh, presentation, uh, but uh, what I take back from your uh, presentation overall is that uh, I, first of all, um, my take on, uh, you know, the design or the journey that maybe a fellow, a Parindi, a Parindi fellow goes through. Uh, Ekto, you have had uh, interacted with various organizations, traveled across uh, uh, different places, understood uh, various <coughs> challenges. Uh, so, what I take back from here is it's like so uh, the fellow, you know, uh, gets to uh, taste uh, various cuisines. Uh, and from these cuisines, uh, so I, uh, the first question is I wanted to understand, uh, yes, you did get the opportunity to sort of taste these various cuisines. Uh, on what basis uh, uh, have you chosen uh, that you know or, or, or what are the rationales that you have arrived to that this is the path or this is the food that I like you know and uh, basing my understanding from the way forward that you have uh, described in a presentation um, mm. second question is uh, uh, you have briefly touched upon this uh, we, we interacted with these communities right like maybe for 15 or 20 days in the respective uh, uh, groups or organizations that you have spent time with do you think that you have uh, understood uh, do you think it is sufficient to uh, to really uh, uh, understand the dynamic or you know the challenges of a particular problem or uh, uh, challenges that the community might be facing do you think you uh, you would require uh, to spend more time with them to really understand that this is the actual problem. You know, do you think you have understood the whole uh, 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 from like systemic uh, uh, approach? Like, have you understood everything or do you think you would need to uh, get in more, uh, dive in more and spend more time with the communities to understand more? I hope I've made my yes. questions clear. It's basically two questions. Sorry to really uh, like ask, uh, make it too confusing. The two questions is on what basis have you arrived to your ways forward? Secondly is do you think uh, the time that you have spent with these communities uh, is uh, sufficient enough to have understood the challenges? Yes. Uh... <clears throat> I, uh, I do not uh, think the time I spent uh, with the communities is enough to understand the whole holistic challenge that they faced as a society. I do agree it was for a very short time, 
but it definitely gave me an insight uh, into uh, the working of the community because uh, at every place I went, I stayed with a parinde who has been working in that space for the last 15, 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, the, that was the time period they worked in. So I cannot say for the community what challenges they face and any amount of time according to me is not enough to understand the dynamic uh, shift of the systemic challenges any community faces. But the insights I have gotten was from the working of these people who have invested themselves within that space. That was one part of the question. And the parameters on which I arrived on my way forward was, uh, I think it was a thought I had even before beginning the fellowship to, to work towards self-reliance and having a community uh, uh, oriented livelihood uh, sort of a thing. These were the ideas that were in my head uh, during the beginning of the journey, but I was not really sure how to go about them what direction I would take practically. So uh, this journey has helped me to deepen my understanding in that aspect of how I can work and engage and understand various challenges and what my beginning should look like. And I believe it is a very long process for anything to happen. And I all I wanted to say through my way forward was the first step I have decided to take. Thank you, thank you, Kavya. Um, I think we'll close with that question and move to the next presentation for the day. Thank you everybody for listening. Yes, thank you everyone for listening and also asking a lot of insightful questions. We might take uh, two to three minutes for the setup. Yes, like uh, in the during the time we set up for the next presentation, I would like to share a bit on the idea of livelihoods, uh, which forms a, a basic context of the premise for the fellowship. So, livelihoods are the kind of livelihoods that are oriented towards social, ecological, and personal well-being, uh, and we hope uh, that more and more people get to experience. Uh, and get to be part of or pursue livelihoods that make themselves feel alive from within as they're involved in it and at the same time are meaningful for themselves and the community, the, com uh, the nature and so on. So through the fellowship, our fellows have explored various domains or areas uh, ranging from community participation in environmental conservation uh, to development of uh, intention-driven fossil communities, to uh, forest food systems and li uh, forest-based livelihoods, to youth development, uh, to women's rights and empowerment, and so on. So we believe these are the, uh, the these are some of the areas, these are some of the aspects where uh, there should be like more focus and uh, more young people to get engaged, so that we can paint a more inclusive and just world, a more inclusive and just future for ourselves and for everyone in the planet, not limiting to humans alone. Uh, so humans and the rest of nature. Uh, and the patterns that we have seen in, in uh, such pursuits is that like it shifts the pattern from 
uh, one that of profit uh, to uh, one that of prosperity. It shifts the pattern from uh, consumption and extraction of resources to uh, conservation and regeneration of resources, and also shifts the pattern from the idea of scarcity to the idea of abundance. So while at a personal level, uh, these livelihoods make the individual feel alive from within, uh, at a community level, uh, we have seen that such livelihoods like aids localization and like at a larger meta level uh, helps in uh, regeneration and uh, mitigating the global inequalities that we have. So it was the facilitation of livelihoods that we are attempting through the fellowship program. Um, and uh, this is a second cohort and for the previous cohort, there are total 51 such stories, 51 such initiatives that have been documented by our fellows, um, which are available on the website of Travelers University. Um, and for the current batch two, close to 50 stories will be uh, coming up in the next few months. Um, and we are also working on a book uh, of the first uh, cohort. Uh, where which will include all the stories documented by the fellows, uh, the personal learnings, insights, and reflections of the fellows, and also structured information on the livelihoods the, uh, the first cohort came in touch with during the fellowship. Yes, I think uh, our uh, next fellow who will be sharing her journey, Lalita, is ready. The next presentation. Ashik, my uh, name Yes, Lalita. Are are yeah. So the next presentation is in Hindi, um, and uh, I'll just take you through Lalita's journey before passing on the mic to Lalita. So Lalita is from Damtari, Chhattisgarh, and her exploration area of exploration during the fellowship was forest, food systems, and livelihoods. Uh, prior to the fellowship, Lilta has been associated with Chinari, the Young India, uh, a collective of largely, uh, la la largely a women-centric collective for the past few years, uh, and working on the issues of gender, youth, tribal affairs, and environment. While working on these questions, Lilta has developed a deeper understanding of the issues in her context. Uh, she dreams for the girls from her region to get a chance to learn and pursue self-exploration just like she did. So Lalita was a, a first girl, or for not just a first woman, like first person from her community, her region to uh, pursue masters. So she, she wishes that like more and more people from her community, from her region, uh, gets to pursue the, uh, the education that, the kind of education that she has received and the kind of exposure that she has received. So to turn this thought into reality, that is ready to reach every village or city from her uh, where people are keen to hear the voices of girls. As part of the Fritupar in the fellowship, Lilitha met with people working on forest and the interconnected domains of tribal communities, forest rights, forest food, and forest-based livelihoods and tribal displacement. She learned about the basic needs and injustices being faced by uh, forests and the people associated with forests. So she sees forests as a living entity, um, which is why, like the, where she she also talks about the injustices faced by the forests. Lilta also has explored the idea of development from very diverse angles, and she feels that the focus of development should move away from electricity and road accessibility and be defined differently in the rural context. As someone who has grown up in a forest dependent community, Lelta has a deep connection with forests and sees herself going back and working for it. Now on the screen that you see is a journey that she undertook across different parts of India, meeting with various people working in the, the, in the area of tribal rights and forest rights and uh, forest-based livelihoods, learning from them. Um, and building on her understanding through the journey. So over to you, Lita. Up, shuru kar sakte apka presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you, Asik. Apne bahut achha introduction diya apka. Thank you. 
तो हेलो नमस्ते सबको जोहार मैं ललिता हूँ छत्तीसगढ़ से आ, मेरी जर्नी का शुरुआत तमिलनाडु शीतलिंगी से हुआ जहाँ मैंने अपने पाँच महीने की जर्नी का शुरुआत किया जिसमें मैंने आ, अलग पाँच महीने में मैंने अलग अलग जगह से अलग अलग लोगों से मैंने अपनी समझ बनाई जिसमें मैंने जंगल और जंगल से जुड़े हुए लोगों से मिलके उनसे मिलके उनकी परेशानियां समझने की कोशिश की आशीष ने तो आ, मैंने अपनी जर्नी का शुरुआत महाराष्ट्र मेडा महाराष्ट्र गढ़चिरौली गांव से किया वहां आ, मैंने मेडा लेखा गांव में घोटुल से जुड़े हुए वन अधिकार की कहानी देखी तो आ, वन अधिकार की कहानी मैंने तो बहुत सुना था और पढ़ा भी था तो ये मेरे लिए एक नया एक्सपीरियंस था कि वो वो जो वन अधिकार की कहानी है वो उनके कल्चर से आ रहा था घोटुल से आ रहा था घोटुल एक गोंड समुदाय में युवक आदिवासी लड़के लड़कियों का शिक्षा का केंद्र होता है जहाँ उसमें सामाजिक राजनीतिक और धार्मिक और सांस्कृतिक और आ, मुख्य रूप से प्रेम के बारे में शिक्षा दी जाती है तो तो मेरे को मेडा लेखा गांव में गोटुल से जुड़े वन पे अधिकार पाने की कहानी सुनी ये मेरे लिए एक नया एक्सपीरियंस था उसके बाद स्लाइड उसके बाद मैंने वही ग्राम ग्राम सभा को लेके समझा ग्राम सभा मेरे लिए भी एक नया एक्सपीरियंस था क्योंकि मैं भी एक गांव से आती हूँ तो मैंने एक तरह का ही ग्राम सभा देखा था और मैं जब गढ़ चिरौली गई तो गढ़ चिरौली में मेरे को वहां पे दो ग्राम सभा दिखे एक गांव का ग्राम सभा और एक शासन के नियमों से चलने वाला ग्राम सभा जो गांव का ग्राम सभा था वो गांव के जरूरतों के हिसाब से चलता था और दूसरा ग्राम सभा है जो शासन जिसमें शासन के नियमों के हिसाब से चलता था तो वो मेरे लिए एक नया एक्सपीरियंस था कि मैंने वो गांव का ग्राम सभा और जो ग्राम सभा उसमें मैंने डिफरेंस देखा उसके बाद मैंने अपनी जर्नी में बढ़ते हुए आंध्रा गई आंध्रा में मैंने अपने सेकंड परिंदे के पास गए जिनका काम विस्थापन पे था विस्थापन आदिवासी विस्थापन पे था तो मैंने वहां पे विस्थापन के पे बहुत एक गहरा समझ देखी क्योंकि आदिवासी विस्थापन जो आदिवासियों आदिवासी विस्थापन से आदिवासियों की मानसिक स्थिति पे क्या प्रभाव पड़ता है ये मेरे को वहां पे देखने को मिला क्योंकि ये आदिवासी जिनका रिश्ता जंगल से है जानवरों से है लेकिन इंसानों से नहीं है क्योंकि उन स्थापन के वजह से उनकी मानसिक स्थिति पे जो गहरा प्रभाव पड़ा है उनके वजह से वो शहर के लोगों से या फिर बोल सकते हैं कि बाहर के लोगों से वो बहुत ज्यादा डरते हैं तो मैंने विस्थापन पे एक मैंने विस्थापन को वो एक अलग तरीके से देखा जिसमें उनकी मानसिक स्थिति पे क्या प्रभाव पड़ रहा है उसके बाद मैंने अपनी जर्नी में बढ़ते हुए मैंने तेलंगाना गई तेलंगाना में मैं बीज बैंक को देखा फॉरेस्ट बीज बैंक जिसमें मेरे परिंदे जंगल के अनकल्टीवेशन फूड को उस अनकल्टीवेटेड फूड और कृषि भोजन को वो एक बीज बैंक बना रहे हैं ताकि वो बाजार से निर्भरता कम कर सके और उनका देसी खेती मतलब देसी बीज वो अपने पास रख सके ताकि वो लंबे समय तक वो फॉरेस्ट में अपना बीज बचा के रख सके और देसी खाना खा सके तो मैंने ये बीज बैंक वहां पे देखा फिर फिर मैं अपने सफर में बढ़ते हुए बीजापुर गई बीजापुर में मैंने आदिवासी जीवन देखा आदिवासी ये ये गांव बीजापुर का बुर्जी गांव मेरे लिए एक अलग अलग तरह का गांव था क्योंकि मैंने अपनी पूरी जर्नी में मैं जो खोज रही थी जो मेरे को जो मेरा था कि जंगल से मैं जितना रिलेट करती हूँ जंगल से मैं जितना जुड़ी हूँ उससे मैं खोजने के लिए जब निकली थी तो मेरे को अलग अलग जगह से अलग अलग परेशानियां तो दिख रही थी लेकिन बीजापुर में मेरे को परेशानी से निकल के वो अलग एक अलग जो जीवन दिख रही थी वो मेरे लिए अलग था क्योंकि वो वहां पे मुझे एक मैं बोल सकती हूँ अपने एक्सपीरियंस से वो मेरे लिए एक तीसरी दुनिया थी क्योंकि वहां पे मैंने वो गांव तो था मतलब 
वो एक तरह से गांव था लेकिन गांव के संरचना के हिसाब से नहीं था वो प्राकृतिक से भरे हुए एक संरचना था जहाँ पे लोगों में सम्मान की सम्मानता दिखाई दे रही थी वहां पे मैंने जेंडर पे भी बहुत डिफरेंस देखा कास्ट भी बहुत डिफरेंस देखा और वहां पे मैंने लोगों में जंगल से एक अलग तरह का हिस्सा देखा, देखा जिसमे की लोग जंगल से सिर्फ लेना नहीं जा रहे थे ले, देना भी जा, लेना नहीं जा रहे थे देना भी जान रहे थे तो मेरे को बुर्जी गांव में एक अलग एक्सपीरियंस दिखा रिश्तों से रास्ता तो मैं जब बुर्जी गांव की बात कर रही हूँ तो वहां पे मैंने रिश्तों से रास्ता इसीलिए बोल रही हूँ क्योंकि वहां पे लोगों में जंगल से एक अलग तरह का रिश्ता दिख रहा था क्योंकि जंगल हम हमेशा रिसोर्स के लिए देखते हैं लेकिन वहां पे मैंने एक रिश्ते की तरह जंगल को देखा क्योंकि लोगों में जो हमेशा जो रिसोर्स का रहता है कि हम जंगल से सिर्फ ले सकते हैं दे नहीं सकते लेकिन जब मैं वहाँ दीदी लोगों के साथ में भैया लोगों के साथ में जंगल जाती थी तो जंगल से हम सिर्फ उतना ही सामान लाते थे जितने हमको जरूरत होती थी अगर हम कांदा के लिए जा रहे हैं तो हमको उतना ही कांदा चाहिए जितना हमको जरूरत है ना कि इस तरह नहीं ला सक नहीं लाते थे क्योंकि उनके पास इतना रिसोर्सेस था उन लोग चाहते तो जंगल से बहुत सारा कांदा ला सकते थे क्योंकि उनके पास बहुत सारा कांदा है लेकिन वो उतना ही लाते थे जितनी उनकी जरूरत होती थी और उनका अगर मैं उनको पूछती पूछती भी थी कि दीदी लोग आप दीदी आप लोग इतना ही आपके पास में तो इतना सारा रिसोर्स है आप लोग एक दिन का खाना क्यों लेके जा रहे चाहते तो आप पूरा और दो तीन दिन का खाना भी लेके जा सकते हो लेकिन दीदी ने बोला कि नहीं हम जितना जरूरत है उतना लेके जाएंगे जंगल हमारे लिए एक जंगल के साथ में हमारा एक रिश्ता है हम उतना उस पर डिपेंड नहीं है डिपेंड तो है लेकिन हम उतना उस पर निर्भरता नहीं बना सकते क्योंकि जितना हम उस पर रिसोर्स जितना हम उससे निकालेंगे उतना हम उस पर डिपेंडेंट होते जाएंगे और वो हमारा एक रिसोर्स बन जाएगा हमारा उनसे रिश्ता खत्म हो जाएगा तो मैंने इस गांव में जंगल के साथ में एक ऐसा रिश्ता देखा जो मेरे लिए एक अलग ही दुनिया थी क्योंकि मैंने लोगों पे हम हमेशा पर्यावरण की जब बात करते हैं जंगल की जब बात करते हैं तो हमेशा हमारे लिए आता है कि पर्यावरण में सिर्फ हम सिर्फ ले सकते हैं लेकिन जब हम जितना जंगल पे डिपेंड होते जा जाते हैं उतना वो जंगल हमारे ऊपर रिसोर्सेस रिसोर्स का एक रूप बनते जाता है हम जंगल के साथ में रिश्ता खत्म करते जा रहे हैं क्योंकि आ, अगर हम जितना जंगल को देंगे उतना हमको उतना ज, जितना हम जंगल से रिश्ता रखेंगे उतना हम उससे एक प्राकृतिक के साथ में एक पर्यावरण के साथ में और एक नेचर के साथ में एक रिश्ता रख रखेंगे क्योंकि पर्यावरण हमारे पर्यावरण तो हम एक दूसरे के पूरक हैं पर्यावरण का ये मतलब नहीं होता कि हम इंसान हैं तो कहीं ऊपर बैठा रहेगा हम जंगल से जितनी जितना चाहिए उतना ले सकते हैं नहीं ऐसा नहीं है मैंने वहां पे देखा मेरे एक्सपीरियंस से देखा कि जंगल उनके लिए एक दूसरे का पूरक बन बन गया है और मैंने अपनी मैंने अपनी पूरी जर्नी में देखा कि जो जो ये आदिवासी जिसको जंगल की जरूरत है ये आदिवासी जिनको बीच इकट्ठा करने की जरूरत है जिनको रिश्ता रिश्ता चाहिए जंगल से क्यों चाहिए क्योंकि ये एक एक सतत विकास एक सस्टेनेबिलिटी सस्टेनेबल लाइफ की तरफ जा रहे थे क्योंकि अगर जो अगर हम बीज इकट्ठा कर रहे हैं अगर हम जंगल बचाने की बात कर रहे हैं अगर हम जंगल से रिश्ता बनाने की बात कर रहे हैं तो क्या वो हम मतलब जब हम रिश्ता बनाने की बात कर रहे हैं तो हमारा वो एक सतत विकास मेरी समझ में आया कि वो एक कंटिन्यूसली डेवलपमेंट की तरफ जा रहा था क्योंकि लंबे समय तक जो चलता है वही एक एक विकास का साधन एक तरह से साधन हो सकता है हम जंगल को छोड़ के हम जंग जंगल जमीन को छोड़ के हम सस्टेबल लाइफ की तरफ जा ही नहीं सकते क्योंकि हमारा पूरा रिसोर्स जंगल की तरफ से ही आ रहा है हमारा हवा भी जंगल हवा पानी भी जंगल से आ रहा है हमारा खाना भी जंगल से आ रहा है हमारा जो आ, 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 मतलब एक सांस्कृतिक से जुड़ा हुआ एक नेचर से जुड़ा हुआ जो कल्चर है वो जंगल से आ रहा है क्योंकि हम उसके बिना सस्टेबल लाइफ या फिर बोल सकते हैं सतत विकास पहुंच ही नहीं सकते तो मेरी पूरी जर्नी में मुझे ये समझ में आया कि 
जब मैं आदिवासी लोगों से मिलने जाती थी जब मैं फॉरेस्ट पे काम करने वाले लोगों से मिलने के लिए जाती थी तो हर आ, आ, काम करने वालों से मैं पूछती मतलब हर लोगों से मैं पूछती थी कि आपको जंगल क्यों चाहिए जंगल की जरूरत क्या है जंगल वैसे भी जंगल हम लगाएंगे तो जंगल तो काट देगा और वैसे भी जंगल की जरूरत ही क्या है अब तो बाजार है जो हमको हमारी जरूरत पूरा कर सकता है लेकिन उन्हें बोला उन्होंने बोला कि जंगल के बिना हम जी ही नहीं सकते हैं जंगल हमारा एक रिसोर्स तो है लेकिन हमारा एक रिश्ता भी है क्योंकि हम अगर एक तरह से देखेंगे अगर हम आ, अगर जंगल को छोड़ के हम अगर पैसे की तरफ जाते हैं कि हमको अगर जंगल से कुछ नहीं चाहिए हम खरीद के लेके जाते हैं हम जितना मेहनत पैसा कमाने में लगा रहे हैं उतना मेहनत अगर हम जंगल बचाने में लगाएंगे तो शायद हमारे रिसोर्सेस का हमारे जो हमारे आजीविका का जो साधन है वो ज्यादा हो सकता है अगर हम एक चीज पे फोकस कर रहे हैं अगर आ, आ, हम पैसे पे फोकस कर रहे हैं तो शायद हमारे पास आजीविका का साधन कम हो सकता है तो आ, मुझे भी इस जर्नी में समझ में आया कि आ, अगर हमको अगर अच्छी लाइफ चाहिए सस्टेनेबल लाइफ चाहिए या फिर हमको एक सतत विकास की तरफ जाना है तो हमें जंग, जल जंगल जमीन की बहुत जरूरत है क्योंकि हम 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 हमेशा बात करते हैं कि और आदिवासियों को क्यों चाहिए जंगल आदिवासी ही क्यों बचाए वो जंगल अगर अगर जंगल की जरूरत पूरे पूरे मतलब पर्यावरण क्योंकि पर्यावरण भी एक जंगल जंगल जल जंगल जमीन पर्यावरण का हिस्सा है अगर हम जंगल की तरफ जा रहे हैं अगर हम पर्यावरण की अगर हम मार्केट की तरफ जा रहे हैं तो हमारा मार्केट और पर्यावरण से रिश्ता खत्म मार्केट और पर्यावरण से रिश्ता अलग अलग होते जा रहा है क्योंकि क्योंकि जंगल नहीं रहेगा तो हम पर्यावरण सोच ही नहीं सकते हैं हम हम वो सस्टेनेबल लाइफ सोच ही नहीं सकते हैं ये मेरे को पूरी जर्नी में समझ में आया कि अगर आ, अगर हमें खाना चाहिए अगर हमें पानी चाहिए तो हम एक सस्टेनेबल लाइफ चाहिए तो हमको जंगल बचाना जमीन बचाना बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है और आ, मैं हमेशा मतलब मेरे को पूरी जर्नी में यही दिख रहा था कि आ, मतलब मेरे लिए आजीविका एक पैसे की तरफ ही जा रहा था क्योंकि मतलब हम आजीविका जब सोचते हैं तो क्या सोचते हैं दिमाग में यही आता है कि जीने का साधन मतलब जीने के लिए एक साधन चाहिए तो वो साधन कहाँ से आएगा पैसे से आएगा पैसे से आ सकता है लेकिन संतुष्टि नहीं मेरे को लगता है कि मेरे को लगता है कि पैसे से संतुष्टि नहीं आती है अगर हमको जीवन का साधन बढ़ाना है जीवन का बहुत तरीके बढ़ाना है तो हमको सस्टेनेबिलिटी लाइफ की तरफ जाना बहुत जरूरी है तो नेक्स्ट पीछे पीछे तो मेरे लिए लाइवलीहुड लाइवलीहुड का मतलब है मैं जिस उससे कनेक्ट हूँ जिस जिस मैं बैकग्राउंड से आ रही हूँ मेरा वो गांव जंगल और एक वो है तो मेरे लिए जो अलाइवनेस फील कराता है वो है मेरा नेचर क्योंकि मैं नेचर के साथ में बहुत ज्यादा कनेक्टेड हूँ और नेचर के हिसाब से ही मैं अपना आ, आ, मतलब अपनी आ, जो मतलब अनुभव है वो चेंज करती रहती हूँ तो मेरे को अलाइवलीहुड से मतलब यही समझ में आता है कि मैं नेचर के साथ में बहुत ज्यादा कनेक्टेड हूँ और अलाइवलीहुड मेरे लिए इस जर्नी में ये समझ में आया कि मैं अपने आप को अपने आप को साइड में रख के नेचर से अलग करके मैं लाइवलीहुड कभी नहीं सोच सकती लाइवलीहुड मेरे लिए इतना नेचर से बहुत ज्यादा कनेक्टेड है पर्यावरण से बहुत ज्यादा कनेक्टेड रहा है क्योंकि अगर मैं अपने जीवन को अलग करके अपना अलाइवलीहुड अपना अलाइवलीहुड को नेचर से अलग करके मैं सोच ही नहीं सकती क्योंकि मेरा मैं मानती हूँ कि पूरी जो पूरा जो पर्यावरण है वो एक दूसरे के पूरक है हम हम अलाइवलीहुड तभी सोच सकते हैं जब हमारे पास बायोडाइवर्सिटी हो हमारे पास वो विभिन्नता हो तो लाइवलीहुड से मुझे को ये समझ नहीं आता है
वे फॉरवर्ड तो मैंने अपनी पूरी जहनी को एक पेंटिंग के रूप में दिखाया है कि मैंने अपनी जहनी में क्या सोचा क्या देखा वो मैंने एक पूरी पेंटिंग के रूप में दर्शाई हूँ क्योंकि मैं मेरे को जो समझ में आता है वो एक मतलब मेरे को जो समझ में आता है जो लगता है कि मेरे को ये चीज बताना चाहिए लोगों को ये चीज समझाना चाहिए तो वो मैं अपनी पेंटिंग में ही देखती हूँ तो मुझे लगता है कि आगे की जर्नी अगर मेरे को तय करना है आगे की जर्नी अगर मेरे को सफर पे जाना है तो अगर मेरे को बताना है मैं अपने जीवन कर तो मैं वो एक पेंटिंग के माध्यम से लोगों को बताना चाहती ये है आ, आ, मैं अपने जर्नी में मैं सात परिंदों के पास में गई थी पहला परिंदा था मेरे महाराष्ट्र के वहाँ पे जो लाइवलीहुड और फॉरेस्ट को लेके काम करते हैं काम करते हैं नंदेश्वर एंड माया कोचे और दूसरा परिंदा था आंध्रा तेलंगान जो डिस्टेसमेंट में काम करते हैं परिंदा था मेरे रमेश सोलम जो कल्चर पे काम करते हैं और फोर्थ पर मेरे फॉरेस्ट राइट पे काम करते हैं और सिक्स पर जो बीजपुर में सुनीता भोटे वो वो मूलवासी मंच करके एक मंच है जो जहाँ पे वो अपने जल जमीन बचाने के लिए काम सेवेंथ पर रानी कंजन जीवन शाला स्कूल जहाँ पे आदिवासी डिस्प्लेसमेंट और से माइग्रेट हुए लोगों को अपने आदिवासी कल्चर वापस लाने के लिए स्कूल के लिए काम करते हैं थैंक यू ललिता फॉर दैट लाइक शॉर्ट एंड क्रिस्प शेयरिंग तो ललिता हमेशा लाइक काफी कम शब्द शब्दों में हमें काफी गहराई में लेके जाते हैं तो अभी क्यू एंड के लिए क्वेश्चंस के लिए ओपन है हम तो अगर किसी को कुछ ललिता से पूछना है तो या कुछ बताना शेयर करना चाहते हैं तो अभी हम वो करेंगे हेलो ठीक है तो पहला क्वेश्चन मैं ही पूछता हूँ तो आपने एक तीसरी दुनिया के बारे में बोला आ, जो आपने बीजापुर वन मिनट Okay. हाँ मैं बोलू हाँ आपने एक तीसरी दुनिया के बारे में बोला जो आपने बीजापुर में देखा ये तीसरी दुनिया मेरे लिए काफी एक नया शब्द है तो आपके हिसाब से वो पहली दुनिया क्या है दूसरी दुनिया क्या है और फिर ये दूसरी दुनिया में क्या अंतर है ठीक है थैंक यू तो मेरे तीसरी दुनिया जो है वो पहली दुनिया तो ये है से मैं आती हूँ गांव यहाँ से मेरा जगह है क्योंकि मैं ऐसे जगह से आती हूँ जो जंगल के बीच में है मेरा घर तो ये पहली दुनिया होती है मैंने अपने जीव अपने जो जीवन में मैंने सिर्फ जंगलों के बीच में एक गांव देखा है तो वो मेरे लिए एक पहली दुनिया हो गई और दूसरी जहाँ पे मैं बाहर निकल हूँ तो वो बड़े बड़े घर बड़े सड़क जहाँ पे बहुत से रोड है वहाँ पे लोग है बिल्डिंग है जो अलग तरह से उनका जीवन है तो वो मेरी दूसरी दुनिया एक मिनट आपका आपका, आपका आवाज कट हो रही है आ, थोड़ा वो माइक्रोफोन बदल सकते क्या आ, आ, हाँ 
अभी अभी बोल तो मेरे लिए पिछली दुनिया की बात करती हूँ तो मेरा पहला दुनिया है जो मेरा गांव जहाँ से मैं आती हूँ जो ऐसा गांव जो जंगलों के बीच में है जहाँ पे मैं गांव और जंगल को ही देख पाती हूँ और दूसरी दुनिया जब मैं बोल रही हूँ मेरे लिए तो वो एक शहर होता है एक रोड होती है जहाँ पे बहुत सारी गाड़िया चल रही है और अलग अलग लोग जिससे मैं पहली बार मिल रही हूँ तो वो मेरे लिए एक दूसरी दुनिया होती है तो मैं दूसरी दुनिया होती है तो मैं अब तीसरी दुनिया की जब बात कर रही हूँ तो मैं दोनों दुनिया को जोड़ के दोनों दुनिया को मिला के अपने लिए एक दूसरी दुनिया की तलाश कर रही हूँ जहाँ पे मेरे को गांव की कुछ जो अच्छाई है वो चाहिए और शहर की कुछ अच्छाई है वो चाहिए जैसे कि मैं जब बीजापुर गई थी तो बीजापुर में मैंने जो तीसरी दुनिया देखा वो मेरे लिए लोगों में जो मैं बोल रही थी ना कि समानता दिखी लोगों में सम्मान की समानता जो रिस्पेक्ट मेरे को दिखा जो इक्वालिटी दिखी और लोगों में मैंने जेंडर देखा जो काम के हिसाब से नहीं बटा था जेंडर के हिसाब जेंडर के हिसाब से काम नहीं बटा था कि लड़का ये काम करेगा लड़की ये काम करेगी पर्यावरण के लिए भी मैंने जेंडर देखा कि अगर पर्यावरण में हमारा जंगल है तो जंगल ही नहीं है उसके लिए जमीन भी चाहिए उसके लिए पानी भी चाहिए तो मैं वहाँ पे एक इक्वालिटी दिखी और ना ही मैंने वहाँ पे एक भेदभाव की दुनिया देखी कि लोग किसी को जज कर रहे हैं या लोगों में किसी के लिए कुछ है वहाँ पे मैंने रिश्तों का रास्ता देखा मैंने वहां पे ऐसा दुनिया देखा जो मेरे लिए एक अलग ही थी तो वो मेरे लिए तीसरी दुनिया थी थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर शेयरिंग दैट या आशिक कैन यू कैन यू ओपन दैट लास्ट पेंटिंग वाला आई मेरे को उस पेंटिंग के बारे में पूछना था एक ओके एक मिनट यस कुछ कुछ पेंटिंग के बारे में बता सकते हो ललिता आप इसमें क्या कोशिश करी आपने बनाने की uh, हाँ ठीक है जो पहली पेंटिंग दिख रही है जहाँ पे ट्री ऑफ लाइफ जिसको मैं ट्री ऑफ लाइफ बोल रही हूँ जिसमें बहुत कुछ जानवर है इंसान है और और कुछ कुछ जीव जंतु दिख रहे हैं आसपास में वो पेंटिंग मैंने अपने फेलोशिप से रिलेटेड बनाई क्योंकि ये पेंटिंग फेलोशिप से मेरे को जो ये फेलोशिप से जो मेरे को ये समझ में आ रहा था कि मैं जिस जंगल जमीन और जो इन्वायरमेंट को लेके जो विभिन्नता मैं देख रही थी जो इक्वालिटी मैं देख रही थी वो मैं अपनी पेंटिंग में दर्शाने की कोशिश की हूँ मुझे लगता है कि जब मैं पर्यावरण की बात करती हूँ जब मैं जल जंगल जमीन की बात करती हूँ तो मेरे लिए सब वो समान हो रहा था ऐसा नहीं था कि अगर हमें पर्यावरण की बात करी तो वो इंसान अलग हो जाएगा जानवर अलग हो जाएगा या फिर जीव जंतु अलग हो जाएंगे मेरे पूरी जर्नी में मेरे को इसमें इक्वालिटी दिखी कि पर्यावरण का ये मतलब नहीं है कि वो इंसान ऊपर में बैठा होगा पर्यावरण का मतलब ये है कि हम एक दूसरे को मिला के एक दूसरे के पूरक हैं तो मेरे को इस फेलोशिप में यही समझ में आया तो मैं इस आ, पेंटिंग में वो दर्शाने की कोशिश की कि सब हम समान हैं और और लास्ट पेंटिंग जिसमें वॉर्ली आर्ट बना है वॉली आर्ट में बीजापुर के गाँव का एक बीजापुर के गाँव को दर्शाने की कोशिश कर रही थी कि वहाँ पे मैंने जो क्या क्या देखा वहाँ पे मैं सुबह उठती थी लोगों के साथ में शिकार पे जाती थी जंगल घूमने के लिए जाती थी और वहाँ पे जो एक तरीके से सब मिलजुल के रहते थे और वहाँ पे जो डांस होता था मतलब उनके कल्चर का जो डांस होता था और जो मतलब हम जो भी वहाँ करते थे तो एक साथ करते थे और वहाँ पे जो एक तरह से उनका रिश्ता था जंगल के साथ में नेचर के साथ में वो मैं दिखाने की कोशिश कर रही और और ये जो बीच वाली पेंटिंग है सेंथालिक आर्ट वो मैं जेंडर से रिलेटेड बनाई हूँ तो वहाँ पे मैं जेंडर को जेंडर को मतलब महिला और पुरुष में जो जेंडर है उनको मैं डिस्क्राइब करने की कोशिश कर रही थी तो अभी वो इतना नहीं है बट उसको मैं उस उस थॉट से बनाई थी
और ये एक गोंड आर्ट है मेरी कम्युनिटी का आर्ट है जो नीचे का जो पेंटिंग है वो गोंड आर्ट है मेरी कम्युनिटी का आर्ट है जिसको मैं अपने शौक से गोंड आर्ट करती हूँ तो वो अभी बताना मुश्किल होगा वहां से मेरे को निकलना मुश्किल हो जाता है तो फेलोशिप से पहले आप एक संस्था के साथ काम करते थे जंगल से ही संबंधित चिन्हारी में तो फेलोशिप के बाद आपने जो भी अलग अलग कम्युनिटीज में देखा और जो भी आपका ये डेवलपमेंट का आपका जो समझ बना उसको अब आप अपने संस्था में आप अगर काम कैसे आगे बढ़ाने का मतलब ये ये लर्निंग आप कैसे आगे अपने संस्था में या जो अभी आगे जाके आप फॉरेस्ट के साथ काम करेंगे अपने गांव में उसमें कैसे लाया जा सकता है आपके हिसाब से आ, मैंने अपनी जो जर्नी में जो मैंने विकास का एक अलग अलग नजरिया देखा है वो अपनी संस्था में अपने ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में आ, मैं इस तरीके से लाना चाहूंगी की मैं पहले तो उनको ये शिक्षा देना बहुत जरूरी है की विकास का भी अलग अलग तरीका हो सकता है हम विकास को खाली सड़क पानी बिजली से तौल नहीं सकते हैं विकास हम पर्यावरण विकास हम आधुनिकता के तरफ से ही नहीं जा सकते विकास हम इन्वायरमेंट से भी सोच सकते हैं जहाँ पे विभिन्नता ला सकती है तो आ, मुझे लगता है कि अगर मैं ये फेलोशिप के बाद अगर मैं चिन्हारी में जाके फॉरेस्ट को लेके काम करना चाहूंगी या फिर इन्वायरमेंट से लेके काम करना चाहूंगी तो, तो वहाँ जो मेम्बर है वहाँ जो लड़कियां हैं पहले उनको उनकी वो समझ बनाना जरूरी होगा उनको वो विकास का रास्ता दिखाना जरूरी होगा हेलो कैन आई आस्क अ क्वेश्चन यस प्लीज ललिता पहले तो बहुत सुंदर लग रही हो यू नो थैंक यू रिदिमा <laughs> like something is different like i don't know what it is uh mera pehla sawal ye hai ki matlab tum painting mein describe kar rahi thi gender aur main wahi soch rahi thi to tum jab gaye aur tumne alag alag communities mein dekha to jo jo ek collective issues bahar aaye forest ko leke resource management ko leke uh, respect ko leke wo to the lekin to main janna chahti hu ki tum wo gender ke fark ko अपनी कम्युनिटी से बाहर जब और बाकी की जगहों पे देखा तो उसमें क्या कुछ चेंज आया तुम्हारी थिंकिंग में तुमने क्या देखा कि जेंडर का फर्क किस तरीके से एग्जिस्ट कर रहा है या तुम उस कैसे समझती हो जैसे अगर माइग्रेशन कम्युनिटी में तुम गई तो वहां पे जो औरतों और मर्द के बीच में काम बटा हुआ था या फिर आदिवासी गाँव में भूल रही हूँ जगह का नाम वहां गए तो तुम उस फर्क को तुमने जब देखा तो कैसे देखा और उससे तुम्हारी क्या समझ बनी और तुम क्या सोचते हो मैं वो जानना चाहती हूँ और दूसरा सवाल ये है आ, कि ट्रैवल करके कैसा लग रहा है मतलब क्योंकि मुझे लगता है एक मतलब स्पेशली खुद से शेयर करूँ तो लड़कियों के मन में शुरू से एक कुछ रिस्ट्रिक्शन होती है इतने घूमने फिरने को लेके या नए लोगों से मिलना या ट्रैवल करना तो वो थोड़ा पर्सनल क्वेश्चन है लेकिन आ, इतना घूम के वो ट्रेन जर्नीज लेके और खुद डिसाइड करके इतनी चीजें नए नए लोगों से मिलके और तो एक थोड़ी अलग तरीके से मतलब और सारी इतनी सारी जगह देखे तो वो कैसा लग रहा है तुमको हाँ तो ये तो पहले थैंक यू रिमा पहले सवाल का जवाब देती हूँ तो मैं जब उस जगह पे गई थी जहाँ पे मैंने जेंडर में फर्क देखा तो वो मेरे लिए इसीलिए मैं बोल रही थी कि वो मेरे लिए अलग ही दुनिया है क्योंकि जिस जहाँ से मैं आती हूँ जहाँ से मेरी दुनिया दिखती है वहां पे मैं जेंडर का फर्क कभी नहीं देखी थी जेंडर का मतलब मेरे को यही यही सोचती थी कि लड़का और लड़की लेकिन मैंने पर्यावरण में भी एक जेंडर देखा पर्यावरण में भी वो जेंडर को पर्यावरण से भी मैंने जेंडर को को तोला तो जब एक 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 वो एक बात बताती हूँ जब मैं बीजापुर में थी तो वहां पे सारे लड़के ही खाना बनाते थे लड़के ही पानी लाते थे लड़के ही खाना बनाते थे लड़के ही खाना महिलाओं को लड़कियों को देते थे और लड़, जो वहां पे जो दीदी रहती थी वो आते थे थोड़ा देर सब्जी वब्जी काटते थे गाना में लगा देते थे या फिर कहीं कुछ करने में लगा देते थे तो मैंने उनसे बात किया कि कि अगर दीदी दीदी मतलब भैया आप ही लोग ही क्यों खाना बनाते दीदी लोग ये तो दीदी लोग का काम है ये मैंने अपने जहां से देखा था वहां से बोली ये तो भैया दीदी लोग का काम है तो बोले ये कौन बोल दिया कि ये दीदी लोग का काम है ये महिलाओं का काम है ये तो हम खाना खा रहे हैं हमारे लिए खाना है तो ये तो हमारा भी काम हुआ ना इसमें 
महिला और पुरुष की तो बात ही नहीं है इसमें तो खाना बनाना काम करना अगर हम यहाँ पे हैं जहाँ जहाँ पे हम लोग रह रहे हैं वहां पे तो हम कभी नहीं देखते कि महिला ये कर रही है पुरुष ये कर रही है आप कैसे बोल सकते हैं कि महिला और पुरुष है यहाँ तो फिर हम यहाँ तो हम सब समान है तो वहां पे मेरे को जेंडर का समझ में आया कि जेंडर मतलब काम जेंडर के हिसाब से नहीं बता है तो ये लगा और और जो दूसरा सवाल है जो मैंने अपनी जर्नी में एक्सप्लोर किया तो रिधिमा तुम तो जानती हो कि मेरे लिए निकलना बहुत मुश्किल था तो ये नया लर्निंग है नया एक्सपोजर है मेरे लिए ट्रैवल करना और ट्रैवल करने से पहले तो मेरे को बहुत डर लगता था कि बहुत ज्यादा डर लगता था घर से निकलने भी बहुत डर लगता था और आप तो जानती हो कि मैं भी एक आदिवासी हूँ आदिवासियों के अंदर में इतना डर बैठा है और किस वजह से बैठा है नहीं पता लेकिन मेरे अंदर में भी इतना डर बैठा है कि मैं यहाँ से आना मेरे लिए बहुत मुश्किल था वो तो आ, मेरा एक चिन्हारी टीम है जिन्होंने मैं जहाँ जिन्होंने मेरे को वो डर निकाला और दूसरा टी टीम हो गए जिन्होंने ये जर्नी में मेरे पूरे साथ थे तो मेरा आ, ऐसा नहीं था कि मैं किसी जगह पे जा रही हूँ या किसी लोग से मिल रही हूँ तो मैं अकेली हूँ मेरे को वहां पे ये फील होता था कि मैं एक कम्युनिटी के साथ हूँ मेरे साथ चिन्हारी है मेरे साथ ट्रैवल यूनिवर्सिटी है तो मेरे को वो थोड़ा कॉन्फिडेंस देता था अपनी जर्नी में थैंक यू रिधिमा ललिता मैं गुरवीन बात कर रही हूँ मैं सिर्फ पूछना मांगती थी एक बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग चीज आपकी पेंटिंग फर्स्ट वाली पेंटिंग में देखा कि आपने किताबों को जड़ों के नीचे डाल दिया रखा किताबों को पिक्चर में पर जड़ों के नीचे डाल दिया तो उसको जरा एक्सप्लेन करेंगे हाँ ये फेलोसिप से रिलेटेड पेंटिंग है तो आ, मैं किताबों को नीचे इसलिए डाला क्योंकि मेरी जो समझ बन रही थी वो किताबों से बन रही थी एक एक्सपीरियंस तो था कि मैं अपने एक्सपीरियंस जहाँ से मैं आई हूँ वहां से मैं सीख के आई हूँ अपने खेत जंगल जमीन से तो सीख के आ रही हूँ लेकिन मेरा उतना एक्सपीरियंस नहीं था तो आ, मैं मतलब मैं अपने एक्सपीरियंस किताबों से ही ले रही थी कि मैं हमेशा ये देख रही थी कि पर्यावरण ये होता है जंगल ये होता है हम जंगल पे जंगल पे जानवर है जंगल से हम ये ले सकते हैं जंगल से वो ले सकते हैं वो सिर्फ मैंने किताबों के जरिए से ही पढ़ा था तो मैंने पूरी जर्नी जब घूमी पूरी जर्नी में एक्सप्लोर किया तो मेरे को समझ में आया कि नहीं मेरी जो लर्निंग है वो किताबों से लेके एक अलग दुनिया में जा रही है वो एक्सपीरियंस पे आ रहा है वो एक प्रैक्टिस पे आ रहा है तो मैंने वो किताबों को नीचे रखा है अपनी ट्री ऑफ लाइफ में वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वेरी नाइस थैंक्स एक सवाल है हम फॉरेस्ट को एक इनर्ट रिसोर्स की तरह परसीव करते है और थ्रू दलोनियलिज्म हम उसको रिसोर्स एक्सट्रैक्शन करते हुए आ रहे थे तो लाइक यू ऑल्सो सेड फॉरेस्ट को रिसोर्स की तरह देखना समझा जाए और इट हैज अ लॉट ऑफ वैल्यू एसोसिएटेड टू इट बट जैसे हम फॉरेस्ट के किसी भी पॉलिसी इंटरवेंशन किसी किसी भी तरह देखते हैं फॉरेस्ट आर अ रिसोर्स तो तो मुझे लगता है कि अगर हम फॉरेस्ट से जो रिसोर्सेस बनाते हैं फॉरेस्ट फॉरेस्ट रिसोर्सेस तब बनता है जब हम फॉरेस्ट पे डिपेंड बहुत ज्यादा डिपेंड हो जाते हैं तो हमको फॉरेस्ट पे डिपेंडेंसी कम करके उससे रिश्ता बनाना बहुत जरूरी है हम अगर फॉरेस्ट रिश्ता बनाएंगे तो शायद हम उससे सीख सकते हैं ताकि हम सीख सकते हैं क्योंकि अगर रिश्ता नहीं रहेगा तो हम उसको रिसोर्स की तरह ही लेते रहेंगे हमको जितना जरूरत जितना हमको मिल रहा है वो लेते ही रहेंगे क्योंकि हमारा तो उसका जंगल के साथ में रिश्ता ही नहीं जब वो रिश्ता बिल्ड हो जाएगा जब वो रिश्ता हो जाएगा तो हमको वो ध्यान रहेगा कि हमको जंगल बचाना है जंगल हमारा एक रिलेशन मतलब जंगल से हमारा एक रिलेशन है तो मुझे लगता है कि 
अगर जंगल को समझने के लिए जंगल को किसी और पीढ़ी पे ले जाने के लिए किसी और को उस उसको समझाने के लिए सबसे पहले रिश्ता बिल्ड होना बहुत जरूरी है ताकि उसको समझ में आया आना जरूरी है कि रिश्ता अगर खत्म होता है तो क्या होता है जिस तरह से कह रहे हो रिश्ता बिल्ड करना है तो क्योंकि हम लोग हमारा अपब्रिंगिंग भी अलग तरीके से हुआ है हमारे हम कभी इस रिश्ते को समझ ही नहीं पाए तो हम आप क्या कहेंगे हाउ हम कैसे इस रिश्ते को डेवलप कर सकते हैं कुछ आपका कुछ इसके बारे में पहले तो समझना होगा कि नेचर से मतलब हम क्या लेते हैं क्या सीख रहे हैं क्योंकि कि आ, मुझे लगता है कि हाँ ऑप्शन बहुत लोगों के पास कम होता है कि नेचर से सीखने का नहीं कुछ आप नहीं तो बहुत कम होता है तो उसको हम सीखने पे ही डाल सकते हैं मेरे को लगता है जब मैं जंगल पे जाती हूँ तो मैं ज्यादातर एक्सप्लोर करती रहती हूँ मैं देखती रहती हूँ कि ये कितना इम्पोर्टेंट है इससे क्या यूज होता है हम आ, हम हमारे जब हम दो जगह पे हैं जहाँ से मैं आती हूँ जहाँ से आप आते हैं तो ए, एक होता है जब तबियत खराब होता है तो आप सीधा डॉक्टर को ही देखते हैं और जब मेरी तबियत खराब होती है तो मैं ज्यादातर पैसा ना खर्चा करके पैसा तो नहीं है बहुत लोगों के पास पैसा नहीं होता तो वो हम कहाँ पे देखते हैं जंगल पे देखते हैं कि वहां से कुछ मिल जाए क्योंकि वही हमारा एक रास्ता हो जाता है तो मेरे को लगता है ये सोचना जरूरी है कि हम अपना वो बांट सकते अपना जो कॉर्ड वो है सीखने का जरिया है वो बांट सके हम हमेशा ऊपर से नहीं सीख सकते हम नीचे से भी जीत सीख सकते हैं तो रिश्ता एक लेन भी होता है लेन देन भी होता है लेन देन का मतलब आपके हिसाब से हमारा हम क्या दे सकते हैं आई मीन हम इतना वो तो है नहीं कि हम दे सके बट स्टिल अगर हम नीचे से कुछ ले रहे हैं पर्यावरण से तो हम रिटर्न में क्या दे सकते हैं पर्यावरण अपने आप में ही बड़ा वर्ड है और पर्यावरण अपने आप में ही एक बड़ा वो है वो पर्यावरण अपने आप ही बनता है तो हमें मुझे लगता है कि पर्यावरण को देने से अच्छा उससे रिश्ता बनाना उस पर रिस्पेक्ट करना बहुत जरूरी है ना कि उसको हार्म कर हार्म मतलब नुकसान पहुंचाना तो पर्यावरण अपने आप में ही एक पर्यावरण बनाता है तो उससे रिश्ता इसीलिए रखना जरूरी है क्योंकि वो हम बचा के रख सकते हम एक दो क्वेश्चन और ले सकते हैं अगर किसी को भैया मैं एक से क्वेश्चन यस यस प्लीज यस मदन गुड मॉर्निंग दी जनरली आपने कहा कि आपका बैकग्राउंड कुछ ऐसा रहा है कि आपका गांव जंगल के बीच में था मतलब कि आपके गांव के बहुत करीब था जंगल तो आपका जो ये ध्यान केंद्रित हुआ जंगल के प्रति लगाव हुआ वो कहीं ना कहीं वो इफेक्ट किया मतलब कि उसका प्रभाव है कि आपके गांव के पास जंगल था तो आप जंगल से इतनी आपका जंगल से इतना लगाव हुआ लेकिन अभी जनरली हम पूरे भारत में औसतन जितना जंगल होना चाहिए उससे भी कम जंगल बचे हैं और जनरली जो भी बड़ा बड़ा शहर बन रहा है डेवलपमेंट के नाम पे जंगल को काट काट के अभी हसदा फॉरेस्ट फिर मध्य प्रदेश में एक और फॉरेस्ट था उसको भी मतलब माइनिंग के लिए या फिर तरह तरह का काम के लिए काटा जा रहा है तो अभी के जो जनरेशन आ रहे हैं मतलब कि जिनको मतलब कि जो मॉडर्न जनरेशन के लोग हैं बाईस पच्चीस साल के उम्र के नीचे के तो उनको आप क्या एडवाइस देना चाहेंगे कि उनका लगाव इन्वायरमेंट से कैसे हो क्या कि इन्वायरमेंट के नाम पे पेड़ पौधा के नाम पे अभी बस पार्क है बड़ा बड़ा शहर हो या फिर जो भी डेवलप सिटीज हैं उसमें इन्वायरमेंट के नाम पे नेचर के नाम पे बस पार्क है उसमें भी मतलब की भारतीय कम और विदेशी पेड़ पौधा जाते हैं उसका तरह तरह का आकृति बना के दिया गया है और लेकिन फिर भी लोग उसे कनेक्ट नहीं हो पा रहे हैं तो अभी की जनरेशन के लड़कों को हम लोग की उम्र के लड़कों को 20-25 साल के लड़कों को आप क्या एडवाइस देना चाहेंगे कि वो कैसे इन्वायरमेंट के और करीब जा सकते हैं बेसिकली अभी हम इन अपना बी एस कंप्लीट कर रहे हैं इन्वायरमेंट एंड वाटर मैनेजमेंट से तो मेरा इसमें लगाव तो है लेकिन हम चाह रहे हैं कि अब जैसे मेरे मेट्स मेरे क्लासमेट्स उन मतलब कि उनका लगाव इनके प्रति नहीं है वो बस इसलिए आए कि कंपटीशन कम है इसमें जॉब जल्दी मिल जाएगा 
बस इसलिए इस तरह का माइंड सेट है तो ऐसा क्या आप एडवाइस देना चाहेंगे तो हम ये रिकॉर्ड भी करेंगे प्लीज आप बताइएगा तो आम, मुझे लगता है कि जैसा मैंने हाँ मेरा बैकग्राउंड तो खैर अलग वो से आ रहा है अलग आ, मेरे गांव से मेरे जंगल से आ रहा है लेकिन मुझे लगता है कि अगर हमको सीखना है जानना है तो हम हमको उन जगह पे जाके सीखना होगा हम किताब पढ़ के या फिर सोच के या फिर इंटरनेट से कि निकाल के ये नहीं पढ़ सकते कि जंगल ऐसा हो सकता है जंगल वैसा हो सकता है हमको वो महसूस करना होगा जंगल जंगल के प्रति कि जंगल में क्या चीज होता है और क्या चीज है तो मेरे को लगता है कि अगर जब तक हम महसूस नहीं करेंगे हम जंगल पे जाके रुकेंगे नहीं हम जंगल पे जंगल में रहने वाले लोगों से मिलेंगे नहीं तो हम कभी नहीं सीख पाएंगे क्योंकि मेरे को लगता है ये मेरे एक्सपीरियंस से बोल रही हूँ कि मेरे को लगता है प्रैक्टिस और पढ़ने में बहुत अंतर होता है जब तक आप महसूस नहीं करेंगे जब तक उस जीवन को नहीं जियेंगे आप वो फीलिंग अपने अंदर नहीं लाएंगे तब तक आप आप तब तक आप इन्वायरमेंट के साथ में रिश्ता पर्यावरण के साथ में या फिर जंगल के साथ में रिश्ता नहीं बना पाएंगे थैंक यू सो मच दे Thank you, Lilita. Thank you so much for the presentation and uh, taking those questions and more insights coming from the questions. Uh, I mean, up up ke jawab se, wo sawalon ke jawab se. So with that, we move to the closing of the current uh, fellowship presentation. Uh, but before we end, I would like to screen a video for all of you. Um, Because many a times, ah, uh, one question that we have faced or we have been asked is that, ah, uh, these kind of explorations are like limited in like smaller circles. Um, I mean, how do we like ah how, how is it connected to the larger picture? How are how can more and more people be involved in such processes? So one thing that we always say is that there is already a larger process. There are very many people. very many communities uh, who are working with with similar set of values principles and so on which we two are connected to and and we are kind of building it together uh, so such a process uh, in india is the vikalp sangam process or the alternatives confluence process uh, so i would like to uh, share a short video it's a song um, through which we'll we can we can explore further okay. Oh. Okay, I'm hearing that the audio is not playing. Uh, let me try once more.
Okay, I'm hearing that the song is start like audio start playing still. So I'll just like put the uh, link in the comments and inviting all of you to check it out. Yes. And uh, you may check out the website of Travelers University uh, for uh, further updates uh, from the fellows, the current batch, the stories that they'll be documenting of all the different initiatives uh, they'll be uh, they'll be documenting about. Uh, yes, I'm just putting the that link to here in the comments. Thank you so much everyone for joining. Uh, these recordings will also be published on our uh, YouTube channel so you can share it further ahead with many more people. Thank you, thank you so much.